Hey guys, Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com. Very excited for 2016. We have a lot of education videos coming your way. We're gonna kick off the year with a razor cut using one of my favorite tools, Donald Scott Carving Comb. Uh, so it's gonna be a razor cut. We're gonna go short. We got our mannequin who has a previously cut haircut. Um, so she has kind of a graduation, more of a triangular feel in the front. It gets a little bit heavier towards the front. We're going to take her hair nice and short. So I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step haircut. Let's break down the sectioning first, then we'll get into the cutting part. Um, sectioning is very simple. So we'll get up nice and close here. If you look at how we've sectioned it off, we start at the parietal ridge, work our way back. And what I did was when I got to the high point of the head, right here, right? So as it kind of reaches the top point of the head, I, I went horizontal line across. So we're really just sectioning off a nice square uh, slight rectangular section right in the front. So you can look at the fringe area back to the high point of the head. Then I took out a little tiny triangle in the back just through the crown. So obviously here is our crown area and I just took a triangle to cut that. Now we're gonna work in a kind of diagonal back section throughout the haircut so that triangle works really well with it. I think it's really important when you're, when you're doing a haircut to make sure that your sectioning works with the partings that you're going for. So the triangular section is going to work the hair back uh, and the weight distribution is gonna work really well with that as well. So just so we don't lose you guys or bore you, let's get started with the haircut, but that is the basic sectioning for the cut. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna start off the haircut. We're gonna do partings uh, diagonal back. So we're gonna work that right behind the ear and I'm gonna put a clip up in there. Then I'm gonna work a diagonal forward uh, section. So uh, the reason I'm taking a diagonal back is because I don't wanna work with all of that hair at the same time. I like to break it up. So uh, we go diagonal back with the parting and then we take a parting diagonal forward and grab a section right around the hairline. Now you'll notice when I'm combing, I'm scooping the hair up. The reason I'm doing that is because I wanna comb it towards the previously cut hair. So I just wanna make sure that I'm consistent with that every single time. I'm working with the Donald Scott carving comb. I love this tool, it's very versatile. Uh, it's got the comb on one end, so it's easy. And then uh, the cutting side is on the other. So again, diagonal back section, about two inches up. And then I go diagonal forward uh, with my first parting. Now I combed over top of the first section uh, to gather it into my hand. But then you'll see every section after that, every parting I take and every section I comb up, I comb from the underneath. Working that carving comb at about a 45 degree angle, uh, that's gonna give the best cut. And elevation's nice and high, um, probably about 90 degrees right out from the head. And you can see how it gives it a nice flow towards the face. That's really the goal with this because we're creating kind of a pixie cut look uh, to the haircut. It's a little bit longer. I mean, I, I don't even know what we're considering a pixie cut at this point, but uh, definitely a longer feel on the short hair. Um, still diagonal forward. You can see I'm scooping the hair up, uh, just speeding the video up. It's very repetitive at this point. I'm following the curve of the head and everything's coming straight out towards my body. Not straight out from the head because you'll notice um, as the head kind of curves up, I'm, I'm still coming straight back. So uh, the angle isn't really changing. You can see the consistency in that layering. Uh, what I love about using the carving comb is it gives it more of a jagged edge. Uh, and now here we're gonna show, so 90 degrees straight up from the head, zero degrees coming off of that. So I'm a little bit above zero degrees at that top section. What that's gonna do is give me uh, a nice graduated feel uh, to the top part of the layer. And then as I build it in, I'm gonna follow the head shape and create a 90 degrees. So I'm building up a little bit of weight towards the top, but then collapsing it with the 90 degree layering technique towards the bottom. Uh, and I think that's a big key point to, or key thing to point out. Finishing up right down the center back, same angling. Uh, so we'll be more at a 45 degree towards the top of the head shape around the top of the crown and then finishing up 90 degrees at the bottom. Same thing on the opposite side, scooping the hair up, working from uh, the back of the head to the front with the razor. So you'll see I adjusted that in my hand, uh, keeping consistency just like the other side, uh, checking the lengths, and then working our way back. Diagonal back, 
I like doing this because it, it allows me to determine uh, when I start in the front what type of length I want in the front. Sometimes when you start in the back, you get too much length in the front, and that's not what we're trying to achieve here. So nice soft layers. The other key thing on the side of the head is you want to make sure you have a nice elevation because if you lower your hand too much on the side of the head, you're going to have it uh, too bulky in the end result because you still have that top part of the hair that's got to um, come down as well. So, Working those sections, diagonal forward still, and then we move as we get towards the back of the head. Uh, It'll move a little more vertical, but still keeping a diagonal forward feel. All right, you can see that buildup of weight right around the occipital bone area. That's where that weight's going to sit. Um, I'm going to continue that same feel. So now we grabbed our Mizutani uh, Type Z2 scissor with my favorite scissor to point cut with. Um, and the elevation on this is going to be up to about 90 degrees uh, towards the end, still keeping more of a 45 degree angle. Um, so we're softening it, but we're carrying that weight up above to sit right about low crown. Uh, so where it's going to be heaviest, I'm using point cutting because I don't want it to be too heavy in the back. I really want a nice soft choppy feel to this haircut. Keeping the diagonal back sectioning um, and over and no over direction, just pulling everything straight out from the head at this point. This is that little triangle section that uh, I showed you at the beginning. So uh, it's a very little hair that we're dealing with. We're just going through point cutting and um, softening it on the top. This will be our last section here. So now we're gonna work on the top, and what I wanna do is I wanna create a left side part uh, and have everything kind of move to the right side. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it so it's versatile, so she could wear it on either side, keeping that weight right in that center line. So you'll see what I mean in one second. So we're gonna take, again, diagonal back sectioning, um, and then this is gonna be our guideline. So we're pulling a guide from the previously cut hair, and I'm going to go in still point cutting because, again, we're trying to create a uh, very kind of loose feel, no strong lines in the haircut, a lot of texture through the top. So, But I'm cutting that on a diagonal. So the heaviest point is going to be in the center of the haircut, overdirecting everything back to that point, and that's going to be our stationary guide. So we'll go through point cut that. You can see my finger angle, uh, everything goes up. So we're basically creating a rooftop on the top of the head. And because we're keeping that stationary guide, everything's being overdirected quite a bit, and it's going to push a lot of that weight to the front of the head, which we will uh, kind of address that in the dry cutting portion. But... Um, that gives us a lot of hair to work with at the end. So you can see same type of finger angle on this side using the guideline from the previously cut section. And just over directing it back. Like I was saying before, I think the, the greatest part about cutting the top of a short women's haircut like this is you're creating that weight. That weight is sitting right in the center of the head. So it makes it versatile and they can flip it back and forth and wear it however they like. You could see kind of how it moves around. Now what I'm going to do is just take a nice, uh, we can call it horizontal, we can call it vertical section, whatever, across the top of the head. Um, and I'm going to point cut even deeper through that, creating texture. So you'll see my hand kind of sliding up as I work through the haircut. Um, and I'm going to do that all the way down the head. Still over-directing everything back. I think that that's a key part of this haircut, and I think where a lot of people can make a, a small mistake is you don't hold the hair when you go through and texturize the same way you did when you cut the shape. So... If I don't do that, if I were to go in and point cut and hold the hair differently, it's going to 
it's going to alter the shape of the haircut. So you just got to be really careful um, when you're going through doing that. Again, starting deep with that hair with the point cutting and sliding my fingers out to the end. Uh, and there you go. So we got a ricotto uh, cloud nine blowout serum. Um, throw that in there, and then we got our ergo blow dryer, which I'm in love with. Um, super powerful, really small, compact, and with our ergo paddle brush, and uh, wrapping that all around. Some new products on the shop, which I'm really loving having because they're just really good quality products. All right, finishing it up with the Vibra Straight Iron, curling everything in the opposite direction, just a little uh, bend to it, and then I go through with my comb, flip it the other way, and that gives me my nice flipped, polished look. Uh, some point cutting through the top, add a little more texture, and then because we pushed all that weight to the front, we use our Mizutani Puffins to go in and just slide cut the front and break up that fringe. And that is our end result. Finish it up with just a little bit of Bricado hairspray. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Here is our end result, which you've already, you've already seen. Um, now I wanna go over a couple things that we could alter about this haircut if you wanted to, uh, to make it more personalized, make it your own. You could adjust the fringe uh, or the bang area. Um, all you'd have to do is, if you wanted to cut a little bit shorter, wanted to keep the side bang feel, then all you do is over direct it towards yourself and that would help draw that line, but you could cut it shorter around the eye and kind of open up the eye in the haircut. Also, in the back, the back eye left a little bit longer. I like that kind of um, fringier look or the mullet kind of look. Uh, it's not a mullet, but it's, you know, it definitely has some length in the back. I like that. If you don't like that, you could cut this definitely shorter and keep the rest of the haircut the same. Um, what I would do is just section off the front, do the front like we did, and then go into the back separately just to cut it nice and short. Um, another thing I love about this haircut is the, all the point cutting on the top that really allows for a lot of texture and movement within the haircut and creating a lot of volume for your guests. So um, this is a really fun haircut. I've done it hundreds of times in the salon that have, and it allows um, a lot of versatility with your guests and guests seem to love it. So. Um, do the haircut. I'd love to hear your comments below. Uh, if you have any questions, post them. Also, follow us on everything social media, free salon education, and um, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do that as well because uh, we want to keep you guys up to date with all the videos that we're doing. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, looking forward to 2016 and a lot more education videos to come. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks.